now we are going to start the the process control see in the previous class we have discussed about this unix process just uh, for a few minutes i'm going to recap all those uh, things uh, these things which you already know see the main functions we have discussed what is the syntax what are all the arguments uh, how why the main function who is going to call the main functions the startup routine is going to call then how the process gets terminates whether it is uh, uh, through the main returning from the main or by calling the exit functions uh, with there are two types of exit functions one is directly exit another one is underscore exit and also abnormal terminations are there with the uh, by calling the abort functions or so many other types uh, the exit functions of two types underscore exit and exit these two uh, 100% if they are going to uh, exit from the program terminates the process but whether some cleanup process will be done in the background yes the exit function will do the cleanup process underscore exit will directly return cleanup process is nothing but some memory deallocation freeing up the space all those other things the next thing is there is a, a one more function called at exit at exit is nothing but uh, if any functions any work that you have to do after the exit function execution whenever you call the exit whenever the process gets terminate after that if some actions has to do they are called exit handlers once the exit function is called some of the task will be done by this exit handler if they have been written in the functions uh, those functions even if you, if you want to call that then you have to register with this at exit function you should send those name to the at exit how many times you are going to call those many times it will be called after the program exits means once the main at the end of the main like this once the return statement is seen then those exit handlers will be called uh, how to register like this at exit my exit one at exit my exit one my exit one these are this function my exit one and my exit two how many times you register those many times will be called whenever it sees the return statement at the end therefore the output will be main is done after that in the reverse order it will print first exit handler first exit handler second exit handler four print up statements it is going to print these statements command line arguments this is what you have seen already in the c programming the same thing environment variables these environment variables uh, uh, this will be used as an address for the so many applications in order to access those uh, you can directly pass them as an argument to the uh, in the command line arguments uh, the syntax of that uh, each string will be name equals value see this is the one sample example so urgent in sending the attendance okay uh, the next is see the log name so many environment variables are there they are the inbuilt you have not created any variables uh, then the memory layout uh, if you open the ram how the memory is allocated for the c program whenever you execute uh, this is how it looks it contains the text segment text segment contains uh, uh, the uh, code the machine instructions the next one uh, data segments uh, uninitialized data segments uninitialized is nothing but if the values are initialized to zero then th those values will be in that data segment uh, the stack which contains stores the return addresses all those things dynamic memory allocation that will be done in the heap uh, the memory shared libraries is nothing but the live whenever you execute the program already the body of those functions has been written and stored in the system whenever you execute any c program that entire functions that will be copied into the memory if you run 10 programs 10 copies of library will be stored in the memory therefore uh, too much of memory is a given 
allocated for this library itself that is why what we do is one copy of those libraries the library routines will maintain in the memory then all those processes will refer that will reduce the size of the executable file that is the advantage memory allocations this malloc calloc or free realloc it is all dynamic memory allocations uh, environment variables to get the environment variables function is there get environment to store with the uh, in the in the form of name equals uh, value put is used to set the functions set the environment variable you can give name value and whether to overwrite or not integer value you have to give zero or non zero values in the same way to remove the environment variable unset in the same way the set jump with the example we have shown how the set jump and long jump will reduce the size of the memory uh, this is how it looks the stack frames of each functions call the stack frame of each function call that will be main in the memory uh, whenever you use the set jump and long jump functions only the main function stack frame will be there uh, how we have done this we uh, that we have shown with the uh one example in the previous classes how to call the set jump and long jump if you use this my memory is saved in the ram space is saved the get limit and set limit there will be a, always there will be a resource limit in the system always there will be a resource limit that resource limit how you can get you can get like this with this function to get the count the there are so many inbuilt uh, variables uh, functions are there with those you can get the hard count, hard limit and the soft limit these are the things that we have discussed in the previous classes again you have to capture one more also here the next thing is process control process control is here in this uh, chapter we are completely talking about the the process process ids how we are going to create a process uh, all those things see every process if it wants to be uniquely identified in the system if you want to uniquely identify in the system how as the normal users we have the names in the system also the you, the process will have a, some number called process id they are all unique they are non negative they are unique they are non negative remember they are non negative ah. why they have been used when they are been used every time whenever the process is accessed it it will go it the applications will search for the name but what is the problem with the name two different functions can have a two different uh, files can have a same name in that case what it will do is always the name with the name the process id will be attached whenever it is been attached what happens it becomes unique the process id becomes unique the name with that process id will be concatenated it becomes unique that is why every process will have a unique process id and it is non negative minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 it is not there it will always be 0 1 2 3 4 5 ah there is a problem whether zero can be given uh, that i am going to say now uh, see this numbers once the number is given like this 4, 438 498 if that number is given to the process whether that same number can be given to the other process no it cannot be given but when the process is terminated that number is going to be reused when the process gets terminated that number becomes free and you can use those number but unix operating system what they will do is they introduce so many algorithms to delay the use of those numbers to delay the or to delay the reuse the process ids why they do like that is see some process some software has executed you have closed it then the process gets terminated but there is small reference that reference which is with the other software a small reference is there with the other software whenever the soft process gets terminated suddenly if you give that number to the other process those two process even though they are not linked they are going to communicate 
that is why they are going to delay the reuse of the process ids which have been created they are going to delay it means uh, once after some 10 minutes after some one hour or after some 10 process are created some 10 new numbers are given then they are going to reuse the the old uh, uh, process ids suddenly whenever it terminates the same number will not be given to the other process remember that they are the unix operating system use the algorithms to delay the reuse of process ids that is one thing the next thing is process id zero whether the zero will be given yes sir. these numbers you cannot see for any process that you create process id zero it is given to the scheduler process in the unix operating system uh, in the background whenever you install the operating system in the background there is one program called scheduler program what is that scheduler program is i think the, you, you have heard this name in the operating system scheduling so many process so many software pro program will be running in the background which process to execute first which one should execute second third when should stop when should start when should wait when you have to resource locate all these things that will be decided by the scheduler process that scheduler process id if you check that is zero it is fixed you cannot get you cannot assign this zero number to any other process that is also known as swapper the scheduler process it has an another name called swapper and there is one more process called init process init process is once whenever you start the uh, operating system uh, as some program it is going to call the bootstrap program means all the program gets loaded right that process if you check the id of that that initiator process that will be one and even though its job is done the init process job is done it is not going to terminate the operating system will not terminate the init process it never dies but what is the special thing with that init process is it is not a user a special super user privilege it is just a normal user process it's a still a normal it, the category of that is there are two types of process one is user process another one is super user process. super user it has a privilege to the uh, so many resources still it is a normal user process but it has a super user privilege and it is not going to die until the operating system is going to run and one more number two process id two that is given for the page demon this uh, process id what what is this uh, which process the number is two is there is a concept called paging in the virtual memory system if you if you read the operating system there you will understand what is paging the process which handles those paging that process id will be will be two remember that process id will be two these three numbers you cannot see for other process it can be other numbers three four five any other numbers you are going to see there should be some functions in order to uh, to get those uh, numbers that is why what unix operating system has done is in the header file unistd and system types dot h they have given already inbuilt functions they have already given inbuilt functions if you directly you use it you can you can directly if you use it you can uh, uh, get those numbers see pid underscore t it is a data type remember it is a data type it is not some other like int float the pid underscore t it is a data type uid underscore t is a data type gid underscore t is a data type data type remember like int float uh, it is also one data type get pid if you call this function directly which process is going to call this function which process is going to call this get pid that process id will be returned the output will be like this 438 900 912 some number integer get ppid 
the calling process parent process side means some process has been created by the its parent process that the parent process will be that number will be returned id is always a some number in the same way calling process real user id calling process effective user id and uh, this process will be relong to always relong to the one group that real group id and also effective group id these numbers will be returned if you directly call and all these functions it will be in the header function system dash this slash types dot h it is not going to give some other process ids which process is going to call that process ids it is going to return the next thing is i said some parent process id child uh, this parent process how the process gets created that is the question for that there is a function called fork function the function the name is f o r k here you are not seeing this i think fork function fork is a function which creates a new process see the data syntax of that it is inside the uni std dot h the syntax of that is pid underscore p function name is f o r k and the, the is there any argument no there is no argument that is why it is mentioned as void since we are not passing any argument uh, that uh, arguments we have written it as void the only way to create a new process in the unix kernel is when an existing process calls the fork function is it clear the existing process will if it calls the fork function a new process gets created a new process get created that a new process is called as a child process because some process is creating a new means that becomes a parent it creates a it is it is a parent and the the process which has been created by the fork that is called as a child even though the function is called once you have written that only once but it returns twice what it returns twice i'll say the return value the return value pid underscore t what you have seen the data type if you print that the return value if it is a child then from the child if you if you create if you call those four it will become zero the return value in the parent it will be the process id of the new child remember this if it is from the child if you call it is it will always return it as zero the number but the return type return value of the fork function in the parent from the parent if you get the return value if you check that will become that will be the process id of the new child see this child it is one process parent it is one process there is a relation between them that is why the operating system what it will do is it will give a, a copy of date uh, data heap and stack what the parent contains that data the same copy will be given to the child also child process will have a, the same content what it is there in the memory it's a copy it will not be empty data heap and stack but what about uh, the another test segment the test segment will be shared test segment will be shared but parent process and child process will gets a copy of this data heap and stack if you go and check the parent uh, data segment parent heap segment parent stack segment and the child heap segment data segment and stack segment a separate memory space will be there so many addresses will be allotted for parent so much of address will be given for a child and the content of that it will be a same but a test segment that will be shared 
with one example we will try to understand this see here uh, system types dot h some header file integer one global variable six is there instead of seeing uh, here uh, if you see it in the textbook it will be very clear here it is not the representation that is not good you will see this example now it will be very clear ah. see there is one variable called global variable 6 there is a text buffer the same thing what is there in the ppt the same example it will be not very clear because in a single page the entire program will be there that is why i have opened this textbook or else uh, in the ppt itself it will be you can understand there is a function a main function see here there is a data type called pid underscore t pid underscore t and uh, one variable we have created process pid one more automatic variable var there is one write function see this write syntax write standard output the buffer this buffer the size of the buffer you have to give it to the write function where it is going to write the content of the buffer the size of the buffer you are going to write it to the standard output standard output write martha we are going to write it for the standard output standard output means console what you see why this minus one this minus one because the last uh, the end of the string will be the the null string right that is why minus one it will be ended with the uh, null string right that is why uh, this minus one if you do we are going to get the the entire length the size of the buffer the size of the buffer is nothing but this one a write to student out write to, to standard output underscore file number means standard output is console the first thing is we are going to write after that there is one printf called before four if the process id whenever the fork is called if it is less than zero less than zero means no hundred percent the fork uh, the process id cannot be negative if it is less than zero means something has happened fork error or else if it is successful if the process creation is successful fork is executed if it is not less than zero means it is greater than zero if the process id is equal to zero when the process id will become zero if the child calls this process id a fork then it will be called as a it will be called as a uh, whenever the child calls the fork then the process id will be zero then it will come inside this it will increment these two variable global variable uh, was six it will become seven variable was 88 it will become 89 it is not zero it is not less than zero if it is greater than zero means parent parent has called the fork the number is greater than zero then it should sleep for two seconds after that there is a print statement what it prints it prints the get pid process id global variable and another variable these three things it is going to print so here what will be the output according to your guess what will be the output what will be the pid here pid will it is going to return whatever the fork has returned some number 438 some unique number it will be returned what about this see the get pid is written some number that you cannot guess what about global variable the global variable is the value of the global variable is six what about var 
88. This is what the output whenever you print. See A write to standard out. A write to standard out. Why? Well, how did you get this output? Because of this statement. If you are writing it to the standard output console, the content of buffer, this buffer you have printed on the console. Then before fork, before fork is this message, printf statement. After this, you see these two, uh, the IDs. See this printf, it is going to print two times. See here, how it has get printed. The process ID is 430. 100% it is written by the get PID. We cannot guess that number. This globe, uh, the global number, it has uh, the four, it has not failed. It is a positive number. That is why it is not a fork error. The next is the child process has called. That is why it has entered here. Child variables are changed. It has entered. The process ID returned is zero. That is why it has entered. And global variable becomes seven. And another variable has become 89. After that, the next time, the parent copy will be called because two times, whenever you print it, it is going to print the old number, 429, uh, the global variable 6 and variable 88. The parent copy was not changed. Instead of this way, what we do is the another way of we are going to run. Instead of directly you print, I am redirecting the output to an another file. Temp dot out. After that, I open the content of that file. Temp dot out. If you do like this, what happens? What are the changes you observe? Say here, a write to standard output, the same output. Before fork, it is going to print. This time, the process ID gets changed. 432, 789. But before fork, once again it is going to print and the old numbers is going to print. How this happens is, how this happens is, see, whenever you see this write function, the write function, it is not a, a buffered function. It is not going to buffer it. Buffer the, uh, the content what you pass. But the standard output, input output, what you see, that is a line buffered functions. Line buffered means whatever you pass there, it will get stored at one place. After some time, whenever you flush it, it will be uh, passed to the, uh, the console. The write function, it is not buffered. What happens for the first time, whenever you directly call, the word, uh, whenever it sees the write function, you have seen the output after that before functions, the next process continues. But for the next time, whenever you have written, uh, redirected the output to the other functions, in that case, what happens is the write function has given the content to the standard output, but the standard output, it has buffered. Means it has stored somewhere in the memory. Once the job is done, two times it has flushed. That is why before fork function, it is been executed two times. If you execute this program and if you uh, see the output, then it will be clearly un understand. That is why please run this program in the Unix kernel. This is how the process gets created. It's a normal, uh, simple program. What we are demonstrating here is, if the ID is zero, it indicates it's a child. If it is not zero and if it is not less than zero, then it indicates it is a parent process. As for uh, uh, what the logic we has is written here is, if it is a parent process, just sleep for uh, two seconds and execute the uh, printf statement. 
if you want to try just directly call this one pid equals 4 and directly in the printf statements you print this pid directly you print this pid you are going to get uh, the uh, unique uh, ids the next uh, how the the functions the files we are going to be shared that we are going to discuss in the next class uh, you can send your attendance now Those who have sent the attendance, you can exit. Thank you. Mm -hmm.